Hey there, it's Tom Cheswick back with another exciting On One Photo Raw video. This time we're going into sky replacements and this video was inspired by Whitney Stevens of On One. So if you just Google Whitney Stevens On One Sky Replacement, you'll find a video that's about an hour long and with it, it's more than just sky replacement. It's a wonderful tutorial about beach portraits. But in it, she covers how to quickly replace skies. And it works wonderful, especially if you have straight horizons like this. You get such a beautiful transition. And she makes it so easy and explains it so well. But I wanted to give my take on sky replacements, especially when you don't have a straight horizon. So in this case, in Phoenix, this is Camelback Mountain. It breaks up the horizon, and in this image we have a tree. So let's hop into these images, and after being inspired by Whitney's video, I came up with my way of still being able to quickly swap out skies, and that's using a masking brush as a dynamic masking bug. So let's go back and see exactly how this is done. So we take this image into effects, Let's start off, um, just add a, let's see, just a tone enhancer and we're going to brighten it up. I just want to show you what the masking bug is doing. So if we take a masking bug and we drop it in, it's partially masking the top so that brightness doesn't affect the top area. And the easiest way to see that is to go click on the mask icon and go to view. And this is what the masking bug does. It does a gradual transition from white to black. So is there another way to achieve this? And let's reset this. And we can, we can do that with the masking bug. I'm sorry, masking brush. And that is hitting the letter B. And what we need to do is we need to make it as big as possible. And we want to feather it at 100%. And we want our opacity at 100%. And this way, if we come across, we have that black to white with that smooth transition that the masking bug has. So let's see how we can use that in this portrait. I'm going to cross out of here. We're going to add a texture. I'm sorry, we're not adding a tone <laughs> enhancer. We're adding a texture. Okay, we're going into the skies. And this part is exactly what Whitney taught. Um, I'm going to choose the sky. This was close to sunset, so I'm going to go down towards the end. And I think I like number 48 is what I used for this one. And we're going to switch the mode to darker. Okay, so now that puts the sky on the entire image. And the sky looks great, but we have to get the sky off the people. And this is where the dynamic masking brush comes in. We're going to hit the letter B, pick our brush. We have it, again, set to um, the largest size brush, 2500, feather at 100, and opacity at 100. And all we have to do is to draw in with the edge of the brush on this mountainside. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I just zoomed out a little bit. It helps with this. So we're going to paint across, come up, come down, come up, and come across, and then just wipe the bottom. Then we'll just take a look at this mask so you can see what it looks like. That's perfect, just like that. See how we have that smooth transition just following the mountain? So when we go to view, we have a perfect sky replacement, and we did it in the seconds. Let's go back to browse. I'm going to show how you can kind of combine this what with Whitney taught as well with a preset. So let's go take this image. 
Same thing. Okay, we're going to have some golfers that will want to clean up in a bit. But let's go into our presets. And I followed along Whitney's tutorial, and one of them was the sky replacement, so we're going to add that. And that didn't work very well, what? Okay, that worked much better. Okay, perfect. So I have a little vignette, and that's just on the foreground. Um, we can turn it off for now so we don't get confused. And then this was the preset. So again, I had that sky that we did earlier. We had it set to darken. And we have the masking brush that Whitney showed. So if we click on that, that did most of the work. But if we go back, it doesn't cover up here. It doesn't cover this area of the mountain and it didn't really cover the tree. So all we have to do is go back into our masking brush. We have it already set. Biggest size, feather, opacity, and make sure we're on paint out. I'm gonna zoom it out just a little bit. Click once, click again, click a third time, and perfect! We have a fantastic sky replacement. And if we go in and look at the details, We're going to see nice transitions all through the mountain, nice and soft. So everything looks fantastic. So thank you so much, Whitney, for teaching us about the uh, mask and bug. And this is how you can turn the masking brush into a dynamic masking bug. Hey, thank you again. And hope you enjoyed this short video. If you like, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit like. Um, talk to you soon. Bye.